What the hell are the Seattle Seahawks going to do about Marquise Blair this upcoming season? Hey, what's going on with Marquise Blair? What's going on with Marquise Blair? I just asked. Guys, I got this. Hey, what about Marquise hey, Blair? Hey, about Marquise Brown? Hey, do you think about, Marquise about Blair's going to start? Randy, you think Marquise Blair's going to start? Okay, enough, enough, Marquise enough. Marquise Blair. Goodness. Whew. At least I'm not the only one. Through no fault of his own, Marquise Blair enters the upcoming season without a clear pathway to getting back out onto the football field as he recovers from a torn ACL. Lest we not forget, Marquise was taken in the second round of the 2019 draft, number 47 overall. And to give you some perspective on this, that's actually higher picked in the second round than recent Seahawks second round selections, Jaron Reed, Tyler Lockett, Paul Richardson, DK Metcalf, and even last year's Daryl Taylor. Yet everywhere Marquise looks, he's facing a roadblock. And this is somewhat ironic because he offers perhaps the most positional flexibility of any player on this team. He truly can start for you at strong safety or free safety. And thanks to last year's trial by fire, he's added slot corner duties to his skill set as well. So why is he so up against it? To understand why, let's rewind a little bit. Go back to the 2019 season. Marquise Blair arrives onto the scene, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as a rookie, and it was probably pretty apparent to him right from the jump that the Seahawks were fairly stacked at the safety position up ahead of him. He was a little bit behind it as far as the pecking order goes. He had Bradley McDougal embedded at one of the starter positions, having played pretty solidly since coming over from Tampa Bay. And at the other safety position, the Seahawks were kind of, for lack of a better word, a little desperate. Desperate to get value out of one of a couple players who had been selected fairly high in the recent 2017 draft. One being third rounder Lano Hill and the other being fourth rounder Tedrick Thompson. Time and again in the 2019 season, they kept trotting one of these two guys out onto the football field and at seemingly every turn, they failed. Despite this, Marquise Blair was able to carve himself out a little bit of a role in 2019 as your dime corner or the fourth corner in dime packages. He also got himself one start in the Baltimore Ravens game. Now, this was a game where the defense really had it taken to them by the Baltimore offense, specifically Lamar Jackson, who at times looked nearly unstoppable. But with that said, Marquise Blair was your most highly graded defender in that particular game by pro football focus. This led many of us to speculate that moving forward through the rest of the year, he would be named a de facto starter. After all, in this one game, he had showed out more than anything you'd seen from Tedrick Thompson or Leno Hill up until that point. But Coach Carroll said, no, 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 no. And John Snyder said, no, 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 no. He will wait. I said, no. Let the boy watch. <laughs> for the Seahawks made a trade for Quandre Diggs right at the trade deadline. Now, he came in to play free safety, and then they're going to move Bradley McDougal over to play strong safety. <laughs> and this pushed our guy Marquise Blair down the depth chart one man deeper. This had many of us scratching our heads out here. What's going on? You just drafted this guy high. Now there's no real pathway for him to get back onto the football field. And the question went really mainly silent as Marquise Blair wasn't able to get back out to play safety that year. And Quandre Diggs came onto the scene and he really was the glue that brought that secondary together in 2019. Indeed, you could make a pretty sound argument that he was the one player addition on that defense that really brought that whole defense together, allowing it to take its best final form for whatever that is worth. The 2020 offseason arrived, and Marquise Blair was faced with that same old conundrum. More established and better paid veterans were due to start ahead of him for the upcoming year. This further frustrated some of the fan base when it was learned that Marquise had single-handedly scaled Mount Rainier in order to train on one of her peaks with former legendary Seahawk great Cam Chancellor. It was also right around this time that the Seahawks coaching staff decided to get a little bit inventive, think outside the box. They announced that Marquise would be in on the mix for the slot corner role for the upcoming year. 
This hit many as a bit odd, being that Marquise had never played corner in his entire career, much less slot corner. But it was still encouraging because the Seattle Seahawks coaching staff was trying to get the most of their talent, trying to get the best talent out on the football field, regardless of position. The plan seemed to work. Marquise came into camp and took to the new position like a fish to water. On one practice in particular, he had two interceptions. But then came another major roadblock. It was announced just before the start of the season, and mostly due to try to buff up a little bit of a meager pass rush, that the Seattle Seahawks were going to trade for all-pro Jamal Adams. This was not good for Marquise. This was even worse than what the situation was currently, because at least as it had stood, with Bradley McDougal still in town, he could look out a year from now when McDougal would be due to be a free agent and understand that he would then have his time to then be that starter. Now with Jamal here, seemingly through the best years of his career, and Quandre Diggs still having two seasons left on his contract, there was no real clear pathway back to safetyhood. It was looking like a long-term slot future for Blair. Game one of the 2020 season at Atlanta. Matt Ryan slices and dices his way through the Seahawks secondary to the tune of nearly 450 yards. And every member of that secondary had a little bit of a hand in that failure, including Marquise Blair. Game two, though, is where Blair suffers the worst break yet of his career. We go to a couple plays into the game. Quandre Diggs comes over from his safety position and puts a nice hit on Inkeel Henry of the Patriots. And in this modern NFL, when you put a nice hit on a player, that now means ejection. The only upside to this ejection was that we were going to finally get to see Marquise Blair at his natural, God-given, free safety position. <sighs> Sadly, though, that dream, like all Marquise Blair dreams up until the point, was shortly lived. Only a couple plays into playing free safety, Marquise Blair came down and filled the lane. He caught the running back around the shoulder pads and threw him to the ground with violence. And then a second later, in came stumbling drunkard K.J. Wright and just fell right on his knee, tearing his anterior cruciate ligament and finishing season two tragically. Marquise Blair suffered his injury early on in the season last year. That extra time should allow for him to get to near full go status by the start of this season. But the conundrum continues, and if anything, has only gotten worse. Jamal Adams will soon, probably any day, be signing a contract extension, and now many fans are out there clamoring for Quandre Diggs to also get paid, as he has certainly earned his way to a new deal. On top of this, if you look at Ugo Amadi last year, both he and DJ Reed were the two corners who sort of separated themselves from the rest of the pack in that secondary last year. They played pretty solidly, both of them, and he seems pretty cemented now over on that slot corner position. Game one, in his third season in the NFL, Marquise Blair will be backing up three positions, yet starting none. The only time we're going to see him on the football field is either on special teams or when he's coming out in that old dime corner roll or is that fourth corner when opposing offenses go to four wide receiver sets, which is pretty rare. If the coaching staff wanted to be creative, if they wanted to tap into that same ingenuity that they tapped into last year by moving him from safety to slot in order to accommodate, in order to get the most talent out onto the football field as was humanly possible, then do it again here but just do it in a different way. You look at this offseason, the Seahawks moved on from K.J. Wright. They don't seem to want him back. The, the roads seem to be open on his part as he's realized the market's a little cold for him, but Seattle seems to want to go with their youth movement there. When you look at K.J. Wright last year, he played two positions. Sam linebacker on early downs, Will linebacker on passing downs. Now, at the Sam linebacker role, you've got that set with Daryl Taylor to fill in there admirably, but it still remains a question mark on the Will because last year the reason you flipped old K.J. Wright, who can barely run anymore, into that will linebacker role in coverage is because you didn't trust Jordan Brooks in coverage, who has struggled in coverage going back to college. Now, this is a great raging debate among Seahawks fans right now, whether or not Jordan Brooks is good in coverage or bad in coverage or whether he will eventually be decent in coverage. But what I don't think anybody would debate is that Marquise Blair is better in coverage right now than Jordan Brooks is and probably will ever forever be in better in coverage. So why not move him into that K.J. Wright will linebacker role? Not the Sam stuff, but just the will stuff, just the passing downs. 
and let him be a weapon in that role. Hell, you could even move him out into Jamal Adams' strong safety position, move Jamal Adams up into the linebacker in those passing situations, and it's equally adept as a weapon. Either way, it's thinking outside the box and getting the most possible talent out onto the football field at any one given time. And if there are still those liabilities with Jordan Brooks in coverage, you're going to need to find some kind of solution to it. Marquise Blair might be a monster, or he might suck. I tend to lean towards believing he has top-end capabilities, which is why it's vital to get him on the field, not languishing on the bench for another year, hoping for an injury. It's nice to have the depth he provides, but it'd be even nicer to carve a role out for a player who might potentially be special, especially if that player is helping to overcome a deficiency. My name is Brandon. Thank you as ever for watching, and please don't you forget, don't ever forget, Go Hawks!